Hey folks, this is Aaron Hummiston. This is the third and final part to my Manga Studio EX4 tutorial. If you haven't checked them out yet, I strongly recommend checking out parts one and two. In part one, we covered setting up your comic, thumbnailing out a page, setting up your panels, penciling a panel, and then finally adding dialogue balloons. In part two, we mostly focused on inking using vector layers, and we also covered using and customizing the pen brush to make it as effective for you as you ink your comic. In this part, we're mostly gonna be focusing on a technique that I enjoy using to help create tones and help separate the characters from the background. We're gonna briefly go over setting up a background as well. And by the time this is over, hopefully you'll have enough information for you to get started on your own comic. All right, so let's go. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do, I'm going to create the background. And uh, in my pencils, I just roughed in a forest. I'll show you a little trick I do with trees. I'm gonna create a new layer. So I'm gonna keep it as a raster layer because I'm going to be using the gradation tool to build my background. You have the option to do a grayscale layer or even a color layer. So you can color, create color in this. But uh, for me, I always just stick with this black and white. Also too, your output attributes, you can select sketch or finish. Finish means this is what I want to put on the final product. If you click the sketch option, it'll be treated just as a regular layer, but it's only there for you to see. The sketch layers will never be used in a final product. I'm gonna use the select lasso tool. Let's say I started drawing this at 25%. Of course, the lines that I laid down looks pretty smooth, but when I zoom up to 100%, you can start to see it's stair-stepping a little bit. It's not quite a smooth line as it looks like at uh, 50%. So I always try to work at 100%. I have my trees blocked out in my pencil, so I'm just going to use that as a reference, and I'm just gonna start scribbling in tree branches using my lasso tool. Of course, that's only half of a tree. I wanna add in the other half. So to expand my selection, all you gotta do is hold down the shift key and now you have a lasso with a little plus, meaning I want to add to my selection. So I'm going to draw the other side of my tree. I'm gonna do the same with the other trees behind it. Always expanding my selection. Now you don't have to hold the shift key down while you're drawing. All you need to do is make sure you hold the shift key down before you place a new line. And once you click to place that new line, you can let go of the shift key. And as long as you're continually dragging that line, it will maintain. So all you gotta do, hold down shift, click, let go of shift, and drag, hold down shift, click, let go of shift and then drag. Hold down shift, click, let go, drag. And as you can see, I'm sort of building a forest. Now remember, anything that's obscured by your other character, you aren't gonna see, so you don't have to worry about that. Just worry about the elements that aren't being obscured by a character. And then once you have all your trees drawn, just need to expand your whole selection by drawing one last big selection that links all of your trees together. Since the lines are drawn, we can zoom out as much as we want and don't have to worry about the image being affected. And we're gonna use the gradient tool. I'm going to click and drag from the bottom to the top. And it's gonna create this nice gradient going from black to white. Where you first clicked is gonna be the darkest area and where you let go is going to be the lightest area. So you can create tiny little gradients or you can make big gradients like that. If you wanna go with a lighter color, I just move the image towards the top and start low in my screen and then drag my gradient all the way up. So that means it's gonna give me a much lighter gradient. Or if I want a really dark one, I'll drag my image down to the bottom of the screen and go way beyond it. And now I'll have a really dark gradient. So now we have our trees, which is cool, but what makes it even cooler is I'll keep the selection on there. I'm gonna go back to my selection lasso and I'm gonna hold the Alt key. Now we have a little minus by our lasso. That means I want to take away from my selection. So what I'm gonna take away from my selection is all the areas in the tree that I want to have highlighted. So I'm just gonna start cutting out these little areas here in the tree. Make sure you go back to 100%. Light's gonna be hitting this side of the tree so I'm cutting out all of the highlighted areas. And of course, the trees behind my character, so I don't have to worry about that. Just the areas that will be seen on page. So I cut out all my highlights out of the tree. I'm gonna go back to my gradient and overlay another gradient on top of that. 
and there we go. So now we have trees that have a slight shadow to them, which gives them a little bit of depth. And now our problem is the background is cutting into the character. I want to make sure the character is separate from the background. So I create a new layer for the character and we'll call it Ace Alpha. And I'm gonna keep it as a raster layer because I'm gonna fill it in with white to make sure he is separated from the background. Uh, you can't really do any color fills with vector, so I always just stick with raster. Hit OK. Go back to my Ace Ink layer, and I'm going to use my wand selection tool, and I'm going to click all the areas I want to have separated from the background. So I clicked his arm there, his body, I'll click his tie. We'll just start with that. You've probably noticed whenever we had some sort of selection, there's this little bar that appears underneath that selection. This bar here is really handy because it gives you just an automatic group of tools that's associated with your selection tool. If you click this first one, it'll just take your selection away. This is called the expand selection. I'm gonna click that once. This little dialog window pops up asking you how much you want to expand your selection. Click OK, and it expanded it just a couple pixels. So now, instead of the fill being flush with the drawing, it's actually going to go underneath the line slightly. So here you can do the opposite. You can shrink down your selection by a few pixels. And then here is your fill, the selection. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to fill the selection. I wanna fill it with white, so make sure white is selected. Make sure you check your layers, go back to Ace Alpha, because that's what I want to affect, and I'm going to fill it with white. Close out of my selection right here. And now that area that I had selected is separated from the background. So what if I want to have the whole character selected out of the background? There's a really quick and easy way to do this. So let's just pretend I didn't do any of that. Now, what's crucial to this is that all your lines in your character need to be closed because we're using the wand again. Go back to our ink layer. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select outside of my character. So really what you're saying is I want to select everything that's not my character, everything outside of it. And you can see people call the marching ants around the outer edge of the character. I'm going to add to my selection because there's still this empty space between his body and his tie. I wanna make sure that's selected too. So I'm gonna hold down shift. That little plus symbol appears next to my wand. That means I wanna to add to this selection. I have the outside of the character selected, but that's not what I want to affect. I want to affect the character itself. So all we need to do is go to the selection menu up here and we want to invert selection. And by inverting the selection, you're saying, now I want to affect whatever is not selected which is now the character. So instead of expanding my selection, I want to contract my selection. So I'm gonna use this little button down here. It contracted my selection slightly and let's fill that in. Make sure we're on the alpha layer. Fill that in with white. So it was a really quick and easy way to separate my entire character from the background. I use that same technique that I used to establish my alpha to establish my colors with my character as well. I'm gonna add in a new layer and call it Ace Tones. Select my ink layer and I wanna fill this part in with black. So I just use my wand, selected that area, expand my selection, go back to tones and then fill it with black. Now I wanna darken his tie, go back to ink. I'm gonna select just his tie, expand my selection. I'm gonna use the gradient tool this time. I just draw a line to fill it in. If you zoom out a little bit, you can see how dark it looks against the background. If you want it lighter, just start farther away from it and end closer to it. If you want it darker, just start closer to it and then end farther away from it and you'll have a darker tone. So this is just what I like using to sort of eyeball the color. Now I want to color his hair. You can see here in my line, there are some open lines. So if I go to the hair and try and use my wand, since there's open lines here along his neck, it's actually selecting his face as well. So unfortunately, I can't use the wand tool to color his hair. So we're gonna use the select lasso instead, and we're gonna have to trace over all the elements that I want to keep. So I'm just drawing a line, tracing over my inks, trying to stay like right in the center of the line. And here, I'm just gonna create a jagged line along his hair, trace the ear, and now we have a selection for his hair. As you can see up top, I sort of missed an area. All you need to do is hold down that shift key. You'll have the add to selection and just add that and there we go. And if there's an area that you don't want, like if I accidentally went too far out here, 
just hold down the Alt key, you'll get the minus sign, and you can pull away from that selection. So now I have his hair selected. I'll go back to my gradient, and I want his hair darker, so I'm going to start closer and end further away. So now we have nice dark tone for his hair. As you can see, there's this added layer here. That happened because I was accidentally on the ink layer when I laid down my tones. So I'm going to undo, make sure I'm on the tones layer. I'm going to do it again. And there we go. Here's another cool little technique trick I use for his hair. I'll use the selection tool and I'll scribble out his highlights. Make sure I'm in the tones layer. Make sure white is selected. Fill it with white. And now he has a nice little highlight to his hair. Now let's do his eyebrows. I'll use the wand since it's a closed line. Expand, go back to tones, and there we go. And I think that's it for him. All right, so now we have a character inked. We have it alpha away from our background. We have our background in there, and I gave him some tones to it. That's what I do with every single character, with every single panel. I just keep going through those steps till I have a final comic. You can export your book to PSDs. You can even export it as layered PSDs. So you can go in and start coloring it in Photoshop. This whole layer structure is going to be there in Photoshop for you. All you got to do is go to File, Export, and then you have all this way to customize how you export your file. Everything's set up for you. But yeah, that's my process of inking uh, Comic and Band using Manga Studio EX4. One last thing before I go, which I think is pretty important. No matter what software you use, if you do create a comic all the way to the end and you want to turn it into a book, the company we use to print Band is called Kablam. Feel free to check them out at ka-blam.com. We've been using them for as long as we've been making band. They're a local company to us and I love supporting local business. But that aside, this is not a paid endorsement. They just provide a great service and a great product. They're a print-on-demand company, meaning you can order 50 books or you could order one book. They only charge you for printing and shipping. All the rights of your work remain with you. They're just your printer. The paper and printing quality is solid. And if you want to sell your book online, they'll help you out with that too using their website Indie Planet. People can order your book, they'll do the printing, they'll do the shipping, and they only take out the printing cost. You get the rest of the money. I'm sure there are a lot of great services out there. This is just one of them, and I recommend them if you're just starting out and you just want to put it on a professional looking book, with no hassling or paperwork or any legal issues. It's a mom and pop company, the guys who run it are artists as well, and they create a great product. All right, folks, that's about it. My goal with this tutorial was to give you enough information for you to dive into Manga Studio EX4 with enough knowledge to where you can start experimenting and playing around with the software on your own. Manga Studio EX4 is so much bigger than what I covered, and I'm sure there are plenty other tutorials that will go into finer details with different things that the software can do. But hopefully this gives you enough information to where you can start playing around and actually creating some content. If you like the artwork from Band that you've been seeing in the tutorial, feel free to check out the website. It's band-comic.com. There you can check out the first 12 pages of issue one. And if you like it, you can purchase the first four issues or a collection of issues one through four through our website using Indie Planet. Also, Band is on Facebook at facebook.com slash bandcomic. There we post most of our news, links, our announcements, and which comic conventions we'll be attending. There's a lot of artwork on our Facebook page, including commissions that I do at the various conventions. Go check it out. Okay, let's wrap this up. Thank you so much for checking out this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful. This ended up being a little bigger and more complex than I was originally planning, which is why I had to split it into three parts. The cool thing about splitting it up was that I got to interact with you all and receive feedback as I was making it. And I just want to say thank you. Thank you for all the great feedback. Thank you for all the comments, all the questions. This tutorial has been a lot of fun for me, not only creating, but sharing with you guys. And I'm looking forward to sharing what's next down the line for my YouTube channel. So if you haven't already, please subscribe. You're also more than welcome to check out my other social media. I'm on DeviantArt, I'm on Facebook, I'm on Tumblr. And of course, if you like this video, feel free to comment, hit that like button. And it's always appreciated if you share this video with your friends, your family, your colleagues, or just anyone who's interested in creating comics digitally. And with that, I'm gonna wrap it up. Thanks again, folks. I will see you next time. Have a good one. Bye.